What is going on guys, it's Cutie Paintball, and today we're going to be breaking down the Nucleus Engine. Now that it's finally back from Anno, uh, I can finally finish up going over some technical information and reviewing of the Force. I also have a Onsaw Reflex Engine here uh, to be used as a comparison and to kind of show the evolution of these engines, as there's definitely some similarities here, <clears throat> but I want to show uh, and illustrate how the Force is different or the nucleus engine is different uh, and how field one was able to achieve the the true intent of the force so uh, let's kind of start breaking it down uh, visually they look quite similar got the same sort of bolt tip uh, the air chamber the can is fairly similar uh, right away you can kind of see if you guys know what this is uh, the shutoff for the force is massive. Uh, you can hardly see the shutoff on the onslaught. You can see right there the brass piece. Um, the the shutoff for the the nucleus engine is is quite a bit longer, uh, which should and has shown to be proven to be uh, far more reliable um, and to prevent leaking. So let's kind of break these down a little bit further and kind of get into it. So again, as you can kind of see here, the shutoffs are fairly different in size as those were one of the issues with the onslaught. Now the shutoff on my force is a little bit different. I have quite a few O-rings here as you can see uh, as I'm testing volume reduction. Uh, to see if I can improve efficiency on the force. So we'll see how that goes. I just put these on recently and have not been able to make it out to the field yet. Again, the reflex compared to the original Insight, they added a single O-ring into the shutoff just to increase reliability. Uh, there is a U-cup seal at the front of here, uh, at the front of the can here, which uh, was standard. With the Field 1 force, or the nucleus engine, you'll find U cups pretty much everywhere on this engine. Another update that the reflex engine had over the Insight was the introduction of a spring at the back of the ram to help fight against first shot drop off and bolt stick. So we're kind of put the put these sort of aside, and we'll get further into the force now. The onslaught was sort of a unbalanced spool valve. Um, it uses a bullet solenoid, which redirected the air that was holding the ram in its rearward position. It quickly shot it into the the rear end of this, uh, the ram and shot that forward um, with a lot of speed. Uh, like I said before, the, the onslaught engine the bolt speed is quite fast. Uh, now, with the solenoid of the Field of Force, if you look at it, it's a four-way solenoid, uh, which is something that you'll most commonly find in a balanced spool valve marker. But if you talk to uh, to Yosh about it, he won't actually categorize the Field One Force as a balanced spool valve. Uh, it still very much behaves as a unbalanced spool valve. Uh, it's just just the application of the air is just a bit different. Now, kind of quickly putting this back in the shutoff here, just to kind of show you how this works. These channels here are the supply. This is the air pushing back the ram into its rear position. And then this air is applied to the back of the ram to shift it forward. Really, really basic, really, really simple, right? Now, 
the intent of the Field One Force was to be incredibly soft on paint. And as you as you just heard me say, the onslaught engine was incredibly fast in terms of bullet speed. Now, how did they address that? By using this reduction shaft. This shaft goes inside of the ram here. The air that is routed through this port. There's a channel that runs through the back of the body. Goes through that little hole there. Goes through this small channel and down the shaft. The air is then applied on the inside of that ram to a much smaller surface area. Kind of slowly giving uh, giving a slower acceleration to the ram and the bolt, allowing the, the marker to be much softer on paint. They did this move also because everything is a U-cup back here ceiling. They, they needed to separate the seal from the return and in the uh, and then in the forward movement uh, because U-cups are directional. Um, they need to be faced the right direction. As you guys can see, the reflex engine and the nucleus engine are quite a bit different. Uh, the Nucleus engine has quite a few design characteristics or choices that were made to meet the intent of its design, and that was to be incredibly soft on paint. Uh, as time has gone by, now that it's been almost a year since this marker has been out, this has successfully proven to be touted as being very, very soft on paint and have great paint handling. Now, people are going to complain that it's not super efficient. Um, it's not inefficient, I would say. Uh, it's certainly nowhere near as close as the the onslaught or the reflex engine. But that wasn't necessarily the intent of it. Uh, you're able to get 10 to 11 pods off of uh, a single fill, which is, I guess, all they need. I mean, the. The Force was designed for a pro player uh, and was tested by them and I guess they felt the sacrifice of efficiency for bolt speed or slower bolt speed was an appropriate choice. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about this or any thoughts on the decisions that they kind of made for the Nucleus engine, please leave them down below uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching guys. Freezer test on the Field One Force Nucleus engine. It's been in the freezer for about 45 minutes now. Uh, this one actually has a bit of volume reduction here with a bunch of 111 size O rings. So let's see if it shoots. No leaks. Two seventy two, two sixty, two sixty three, two seventy three, two sixty six. So that's shooting exactly where it was before.